Well, right now, world leaders are considering tough new sanctions to help contain Iran's nuclear program. But our next guest says he would back this country going to war as a last result, a resort, I should say, to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapon, weapons. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham is a Republican on the Armed Services Committee. Uh, it sounds pretty ominous at a time when we are just wrapping up yeah. the war in Iraq and we've still got the war in Afghanistan underway. But you say it might be necessary? Yeah, I'll, I'll most definitely. The IAEA report uh, uh, about Iran's nuclear program is chilling. And the question you have to ask yourself, what is the most dangerous scenario we could face in the 21st century? I think it would be the Iranian theocracy, the Ayatollahs with a nuclear weapon. They may give it to a terrorist. They may use it against Israel. They'd blackmail the region. So I just don't think there's any doubt in my mind that is a non-starter. Sanctions could work. You'd have to cut off the refined petroleum. The Russians and the Chinese would have to play harder than they are today. I'm willing to try another round of sanctions, but I would use military force as the last option, not relish it, be resolved to do it, because if they do get a nuclear weapon, the whole Mideast goes into a nuclear arms race, and the Israelis will never know freedom and security if Iran has a uh, nuclear weapon. Well, what about that national intelligence, intelligence estimate? Uh, was it in 2003 that famously <laughs> estimated that it, Iran it was had wrong. given up? <laughs> it was wrong. And that's, what, that's the problem. In a closed dictatorship, you really don't know. And I'm afraid time is not on our side. I think it's universally believed they're trying to develop a nuclear weapon, not nuclear power. The IAEA report was chilling. They're further down the road than I thought. So uh, the administration needs to get the Russians and the Chinese on board quickly. And if that doesn't work, Israel's got to make a decision. It would be better for the United States to use military force than Israel if it were ever used because we have more capability. The Iranian nuclear program, John, is too redundant, in my view, to hit it with one, with one strike. You'd have to really go after the Army, their Navy, their Air Force, and, and neuter this regime. That's what's left to us now because we've waited so long. Well, you bring up an interesting uh point that ties to one of the other questions on Capitol Hill right now, that is, what happens if this so-called super committee cannot reach some kind of an agreement on cutting a trillion dollars? You say you are very concerned about the potential impact on our military if the Pentagon has to bear the burden of those cuts. Well, uh, I asked Secretary Panetta, what would it mean to the Department of Defense to have $600 billion taken out over the next decade on top of the $400 billion we're trying to, to save already. He said it would be shooting ourselves in the head. He, gave a, he, he responded by letter to a request that Senator McCain and I made in writing the effect it would have on the military. Please read that letter or parts of it to your listeners. It is the most chilling account a 23% across the board cut in defense. Uh, we'd have the smallest Navy since 1915, have the smallest Army since 1940. The sequestration of 600 billion out of DOD if the super committee fails would destroy our national defense. That's not me saying it, that's Leon Panetta, and I'm not gonna let that happen. Yeah, we'll certainly get that letter up on our uh, website for viewers Please. to take a look at. Thanks, Senator. Um, I know that uh, you and Senator McCain often stand shoulder to shoulder on defense <laughs> issues. He had a pretty testy yeah. exchange that Steve Santani yeah. played for us a little bit earlier in the hour with Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, essentially suggesting that uh, the administration dragged its feet in negotiating with Iran to the point that Iran said, Iraq. okay, get, get your, I'm sorry, Iraq, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah. Iraq said essentially get your troops out now and we said okay the senator thinks that that's what the administration wanted do you agree well there's a heck of a case to be made that we were not enthusiastic about it I was there in May with Lieberman and Senator McCain, Senator Lieberman and McCain and I was talking to Maliki about immunity legal protections for our troops and he says how many troops do you want to have here I turned to our ambassador and our commander and said, well, we haven't, found, we haven't decided that yet. So we've never given the Iraqis a number. Here's my concern. Based on what the president did in Afghanistan, recovering the surge forces in September of next year, not an option given by our commanders two months before his election. He made a campaign promise to have all troops out by 2008. The Kurds would take as many American troops as we could provide to Iraq. The Sunni Speaker of the House said that Iran is emboldened by us leaving, and he's afraid of outside influences now that we're leaving. So if the Kurds, the Kurds and the Sunnis want troops, 
and Maliki said in May he would be willing to do it if other groups agreed. I'm very suspicious that we ever gave them a number, and I think, quite frankly, this administration has been playing politics with troop levels in Iraq or Afghanistan. There's a good case to be made of that in Afghanistan, and I don't believe that, no, that the Iraqi military advised their uh, uh, civilian leaders that they needed U.S. help post-2011. Uh, it's just suspicious to me that we couldn't deliver when everybody else was embracing the idea of a follow-on force. And if Iran is emboldened, as you suspect, by our departure, we do not want that country with a nuclear weapon. Senator, All I can tell you is Iran is threatened by democracy in Iraq, and they're going to do everything they can to undermine it, and us not being there providing security has accelerated their chances of success. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, thank you. Thank you. A lot to think about there in that conversation.